the name of my lab is super microorganic functional assembly. So you want to make a assemble, assembled structure with a function. After you get your target compound pure, purified, then how to believe you get a pure compound? So you have to use a, like a AMR and the mass spectroscopy and the chromatography to see the purity of your compound. That's called the identification and the characterization. Then after that step, you get your pure compound. Then you can start to study the like the host gas bandy behavior and uh, also the bandy properties uh, of your microcycle. So we use sugar to selectively, highly selectively extract the gold ion from the mixture, from the metal mixture out from the water. Then we can get a very pure gold after a very simple uh, workup process. So our process bypass the use of cyanide. That's the major advantage of our process. Firstly, we we use another software called ChemDraw to to draw the structure with uh, the structural formula formula of your structure. Then just use the molecular dynamic simulation. Then the the software will get uh, optimize your structure. Then you will see your structure is possible or not. So simulation uh, can make our work uh, more simple. You know, someone's opinion may contradict yours. Where's my friend Alan? It's all about your perspective. Who are we and what is the nature of this reality? What's up everyone, welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakyan. We are on site at the beautiful West Lake University in Hangzhou, China. We are now gonna be talking about supramolecular chemistry. We have Dr. Jicheng Lu joining us on the show. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for coming on our show, really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> it was super yeah, cool I'm being in your, It was so fun being in your lab too, getting a tour from you. For those that don't know, Jichung's background. He's an assistant professor and principal investigator at Westlake University working on supermolecular organic functional assemblies, SOFA, which will unlock a new paradigm in organic chemistry. And you can find all of his links in the bio below. Okay, Jichung, let's start things off with one of our favorite questions we like asking our guests. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on the direction of our world? Our thoughts, I think uh, uh, we are becoming very, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the, our world will be very precisely going to detailed directions. Uh, and uh, we, uh, like, uh, for example, chemistry, we are studying more and more deeply, and uh, uh, we, uh, how to explain? Uh, let me think. Uh, 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 for example, my research area become very uh, precise assembly. Uh, I mean. You just uh, when you study deeply, deeply, uh, and deeply, then uh, you will get uh, more get uh, get more details uh, into. Then other you is is a bit yeah. I just our uh, mm, our world will not be a uniform world anymore. I think uh, we will be. Uh, uh, personalized or, or in you, you, unique, I think, uh, for everyone. Uh, uh, for example, uh, for the disease uh, therapy, um, we, we, we can, um, uh, 
very accurately to hear the disease uh, without hurt other parts of your body. Um, yeah, just the uh, accuracy and the uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is a good point. It's that we have newer and newer tools that let us go to the deeper and deeper depths of yeah. science, and in your field especially with chemistry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna be talking about that. Okay. Who were you as a kid growing up, and how did you get interested in science and chemistry? Actually, I got interested in science, uh, especially in chemistry. It started from my primary school, I think, uh, because my uh, my primary school teacher showed uh, showed me very interesting uh, chemistry interaction, uh, chemistry reaction phenomena like uh, the color change and the hydrogen burn, or uh, those kind of uh, chemical reactions. Uh, make me very excited. So I uh, started uh, my primary school. I, I, have, uh, I have had a, a very strong um, interest in it. Then I pursued it. Uh, 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 maybe it's pursued it through high school and then the undergraduate study. Uh, <coughs> then I uh, Start from my master degree, I I I went into the area of uh, organic chemistry, yep. and then uh, after organic chemistry study, I investigated my uh, 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 PhD study in the area of polymer chemistry, and then uh, in my post postdoc uh, research. Uh, area is uh, super microchemistry. So I, I think uh, all these uh, areas in my research can in integrate into one. So that's what I'm working on now. So yes. uh, yeah. I love the young kid that's learning about color changes, color changes and learning about just the most fundamental chemistry things and gets yeah. really excited. Yeah. by it and then ends up pursuing the life in the field. I, I really like that. And this was uh, organic chemistry at Hunan University first, yeah. then a PhD in organic chemistry from Shanghai Institute of Organic Chemistry. Yes. And then you came to the United States, you mm -hmm. came to Northwestern yeah. and did your postdoc in supermolecular chemistry and mechanostereochemistry. Mm. So let's talk about what that is because that's very cutting edge super molecular chemistry complex molecules held together by non-covalent bonds and this is usually large groups of molecules that form sphere rod or sheet like species so why super molecular assembly what is this why is it so important uh super chemistry is very important uh, it, uh, one example is uh, our body. Our body actually is a uh, 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 super assembly. Yeah, uh, maybe this is too big, but for a very small one, for one cell, one cell, one cell actually is a, a, a sphere-like uh, capsule. But that's a super assembly. That's a lot more, a lot more nucleus. Uh, then assemble into a uh, double layer, then form the, uh, the wall of the cell, then encapsulate uh, everything, like DNA or everything inside of the capsule, then form a cell. So that's uh, exactly a supernuclear assembly. So, uh, so for supernuclear study, we are going to study the, the uh, basic molecules, how to assemble into functional assemblies. Um, yeah, so for assembly into life, that's the, I think is the, the terminal target of our study. And, but now maybe 
in our very <coughs> fundamental study, we uh, we only study the very uh, simple uh, analogous to simulate the assembly of life process. So yeah, we we start from simple, then we are going to the complicated one. Yeah, so. Uh, all of this assembly is through non coined uh, interactions. Non coined interactions, for example, the pipe stake interaction and the hydrogen bond interaction. Hydrogen bond interaction is very uh, uh, unique for maybe for protein. For protein, you know, the protein, uh, uh, the whole protein is uh, a linear polymer, but uh, this linear polymer can. Uh, fold D and uh, coil into alpha helix or beta sheets structures, then the final structure will become functional. So, yeah, that's that's what we are going to do. So that's why my the type the name of my lab is supermicroorganic functional assembly. So you want to make a assembled assembled structure with a function. Yeah, that's uh, what we are going to do. Yes. Yeah, I think uh, that's the target of uh, all super chemists. Yes, yes. Yeah. So we want to understand a molecule that is not just an individual H2O molecule, mm. but we want to make m lots of molecules that are connected to each other in an assembly yeah. that is functional mm. in some way f yeah. for us. Yes. And right now, supermolecular chemists are interested in synthesizing. So first designing ones mm -hmm. and then synthesizing these supermolecular assemblies that have some sort of functional purposes in our world across different fields. Healthcare, energy, agriculture, it's unlimited, right? The mm. amount of fields, it can be everywhere. Mm -hmm. Supermolecular assemblies. Yes. Yes, yes. So, uh, supermolecular uh, assembly, uh, uh, so supermolecular chemistry can be applied in many areas. Uh, mm, I think one one area is for <coughs> like uh, the for like a drug delivery. Yeah. Drug delivery normally the some drugs are hydrophobic, but if you want to make the uh, you, uh, but in our body is a hydrophilic uh, environment. So normally we use the uh, hydrophilic uh, host molecular. Then uh, the, which th this molecular can bind it to the hydrophobic uh, drug mo molecular. Then finally you will form a complex. That the complex will become hydrophilic. Then you can uh, put into uh, your body and uh, get a good uh, absorption. Yeah, yes. that's one application. I think uh, yes. uh, another application is uh, uh, like uh, 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 maybe, for example, our the detergent or uh, for washing. Oh yeah, yeah, detergent. The detergent, 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 detergent. Yeah, that that actually uh, is a. Uh, a self-assembly process. It, you uh, use the <coughs> surfactant molecular. The surfactant molecular can form a capsule to to include your oil, or then move into water. Mm -hmm. The your oil, your oil in your dish is not uh, 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 water soluble, but uh, after. Uh, capsulation with the surfactant, then the oil drop will become water soluble, then you can wash it away. Mm. That's, that's also an uh, application of supernumic chemistry. So supernumic chemistry, I think uh, um, 
a lot of it just uh, uses the assembly behavior of basic molecules, organic molecules. So, so uh, this one's very relatable. So yeah. the the little detergent yeah. pods that yeah. we put in the dishwasher or into yeah. the laundry machine, yeah. that those have on the outside that yeah. little the yeah. little thin yeah. uh, that you know it doesn't break yeah. uh, when you're into your hand. But as soon as it makes contact with the water yeah, yeah. for a long period of time and shake, the that's the super molecular assembly breaks apart and it opens the detergent yeah. in yeah. the wash. Yeah. So it's the thin sheet. Thin sheet, yes. Is top layer, yes. Top layer. Yeah. That's a super molecular assembly. Yes. That's exactly the Supernuclear assembly. Interesting. Yeah. And what do they? Do you know what that's called? That thin sheet. Does it have a name? Uh, we normally just call the double layer structure. Okay. It's quite actually quite similar to the the wall of a cell. Oh, interesting. The wall of a cell. Yeah. Yeah. Double layer. Yeah. Double layer. Yeah. The hydrophobic uh, layer inside the layer. And the hydrophilic head is the outside, outside. Uh, of the sphere. Yeah. Hydrophilic outside. Uh, Hydrophobic inside. inside. So that's in the water uh, area. But also you can use some reverse uh, surfactant. Uh, the, th this yeah. process can also be reversed in all your environment. Yes. 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 Interesting. Yeah. Because the hydrophobic inside doesn't break because it's connected to the more water, and then the hydrophilic is yeah. on the outside and, and to it contact with the water. To contact with the water and then break when it's ready to contact and break. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So double layer and you can switch. You can put hydrophobic on the outside, hydrophilic on yeah. the inside if you want. You can switch. Yeah. 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 For yeah. different applications. Yeah. Different uh, environment. In different uh, environments. You yes. said one was you would put the hydrophobic on the outside to if you had oil or something. Oh uh, yeah. Is that what you said? Oil. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Interesting. Where in what? When would you do that if you had the oil on the outside? Oil uh, outside, I think uh, uh, <coughs> this uh, is one major application is uh, in our chemical reaction for the we call the uh, this kind of molecule as a uh, uh, phase transfer catalyst. Mm -hmm. Phase transfer. So you have two layer. One is the oil layer. One is the aqueous layer. Then, but uh, uh, you have to transfer some reagent from the water phase to your oil phase. So you have to use, use this kind of what we call a phase transfer catalyst. Yes. 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 A phase transfer catalyst. So I would have to move something uh, from the so from one phase to, to another, another phase. phase. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. <coughs> the two phases are not soluble together. The two phases are not soluble yet yeah. together. Yes, yeah. yes. And you have to move one thing from one to the other. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. And then the other example you gave was the drug target. Drug well. target. Yeah. 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 Yes. So drug delivery. Yeah. Drug delivery. Yeah. 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 Mm. So you have to deliver a complex super molecule to a very specific place inside of yeah. the body. Ah uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so, if you make a s super molecule that can identify in the body where it has to go, and then mm. have it go. Mm, yes, you can. You can do like that. Yeah, you can put a, a like a, a, yeah, that's called a targeted drug delivery. Yes. Yeah, the targeted drug delivery. Yeah. Now. Let's talk about, you know, during also the, the during the postdoc, mm -hmm. you founded, you co-founded a company called Cyclidex. Yes. And this received an SF funding. You were isolating and purifying gold. So this also has, a, you have a process also with what you're doing right now in the lab with this purification process. So teach us about 
what exactly Cyclidex is doing? Uh, Cyclidex now is doing about uh, to scale up this process into uh, practical applications. Uh, um, uh, hopefully, we can use this into uh, all over the world, uh, everywhere the gold mines in all gold mines. Because now, in now, in now, uh, the nowadays the gold gold uh, uh, maybe gold purification uh, and the gold extraction. Go to recovery. People use cyanide, a very toxic uh, uh, compound, to extract gold from the mine. We use cyanide, cyanide to extract yeah. gold from the extract mine. Extract gold, yes. So, mm, our advantage of the process is we don't use cyanide. We bypass the use of cyanide. We can use a, a very environmental B line compound we call the cyclodextrin. Cyclodextrin actually is a sugar. Mm. We can eat it. Wow. Yeah, it's edible. So we use sugar to selectively, highly selectively extract the gold ion from the mixture, wow. from the metal mixture out from the water. Then we can get a very pure gold after very simple uh, walk up process. So our process bypass the use of cyanide. That's the major advantage of our process. Because now the sanitation process he, um, made a, 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 a lot of uh, environmental destructive problem. Yeah. How, how do you get a sugar to bind with the gold ion? Yeah. How does the sugar? The sugar. Uh, this this is also based on the uh, uh, principle of supernatural chemistry. Uh, supernatural chemistry. We use the non-covalent bond to form a supernatural complex. Mm. So the gold ion uh, with the four bromine atom co uh, coordinated the, the gold ion. This kind of gold ion can. Uh, can be encapsulated into the cavity of cyclodextrin. Cyclodextrin is the, macro, uh, the macrocyclic sugar. Then this macrocyclic sugar can bind the gold ion inside the cavity through hydrogen bonding. Yeah, so you can get a very compact, uh, supernuclear complex, and then this complex can precipitate out from water. Mm -hmm. Then you will get a pure gold. Wow. Yeah, that's what. Uh, wow. uh, actually, I discovered this uh, this uh, phenomenon and uh, this process uh, by serendipity. Wow. Yeah. So this is. Uh, yeah. I, I, maybe I, I I should say oh just uh, this is a gift of God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wow. <laughs> Yeah, well, when you also study a field mm. so closely and so much also at the edge, so few people are doing super molecular chemistry right now. And so, of course, the people that are going to be there doing it, the first ones are going to find the lucky things uh, like that, yes. the gifts of God. Yeah, yeah, huh. yeah, yeah, huh. yeah. Okay, and then... This transition happened in 2018 in September. It's been a year now. Uh. To assistant professor in PI at Westlake. Yeah. And the Super Molecular Organic Functional Assemblies Lab, SOFA. Hmm. SOFA Lab. SOFA Lab, yes. Yeah. And so let's start talking about this. You guys actually just published a paper again yesterday. Uh. You've had 54 of these now, high profile scientific papers, 10 patents. Let's talk about what's going on in the lab and we'll start with the fundamentals. So what are these fundamentals that you guys care about in supermolecular chemistry? Uh, uh, in our lab, now the very fundamental uh, study is uh, uh, one area is focused on to make uh, 
cyclic compound because uh, uh, we are doing supernatural chemistry. Cyclic compound normally we call the host, uh, host molecule. Cyclic compound always can can encapsulate something or bind something. So make the cyclic compound, then this uh, can be used to selectively encapsulate uh, some target molecules and uh, make it uh, uh, maybe more soluble or just uh, maybe separate from others. So this is the uh, uh, I think a very fundamental idea is about uh, the cyclic compound. Yes. Yes. We because it can encapsulate yeah. something. It can. Yeah. Because the the cyclical aspect to it can house can encapsulate something in it. And usually, what do you want to encapsulate in it? You gave us the example of the gold earlier. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Gold so, only, yes. And then what else can you house here or encapsulate here? Encapsulate here actually you, you different for different uh, guest molecular we call the the molecular uh, encapsulate the guest molecular. Uh, so mm. different uh, guest molecular can use different uh, host molecules. So um, and the names again guest. Guest, G U E S T, just the guest. Guest is on the inside, the yeah, one that comes the, in. Inside the host. Yeah. 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 And the the house. Host. The ho host. Host. Okay, cool. So the host is here, the one that's encapsulating yeah, is yeah. the host. Yeah. And this is the guest that comes in. Yes. Yeah. Uh, host guest chemistry, we also call. Host guest chemistry. Yeah. This is, a, so cool. is a parent. Uh, Parallel name with uh, supernatural chemistry yes. sometimes. Host guess. Yeah. Cool. Because Ho cyclical is so important. Okay. Cyclical, yeah. Cyclical is very important. Is, yeah. So. Wow. Okay. Who else can be the guest? A lot. A lot. <laughs> a lot. Uh, uh, like uh, I, I say that the, the uh, halogenated gold ion. Is, is is one that's a totally hydrophilic one, but a lot of uh, hydrophobic molecules, like um, as I said, the maybe some hydrophobic drug molecules, uh, and uh, also um, sometimes just uh, some petrochemicals compound like uh, uh, different uh, toluenes or xylenes, xylene mixture. We can use the microcyclic compound because different isomers has different binding uh, association uh, constant. So you can get a very good separation. Normally, for separation is a very important uh, for chemical engineering. So uh, uh, especially for uh, a patrimonial engineering, I think. Uh, yeah. So we make a lot, of, uh, a lot of just uh, chemicals you have to purify, but you, you get a mixture. For example, today we showed in the lab is uh, the chromatography. You have to use some C, use a column to purify your compound, your mixture. You get a pure compound, but uh, as I said, we can also use a microcycle, microcycle compound to purify. Your, uh, your mixture to get uh, the specific one. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We'll get we'll get here in a little bit on the purification. Let's stay with the next step. So we have this fundamental of the having a a cyclical uh, cyclical yes uh, uh, host host yes host. cyclical host yeah. and then you. Yeah. want to design the host yes okay yeah so you in order and this is hard because the host that you're designing mm. is uh sometimes it's not found in nature yeah so you have to make 
make yes. you synthesize you're, you're mm. going to synthesize something that's not found in nature okay yeah. so then you have to design what this cyclical molecule should look like yeah uh, the detailed structure the even yeah detailed structure of the yeah. of the super molecule uh, yeah the the, the, the micro cycle yeah yeah okay and so then teach us about the the design because you have to use software chemistry software you have to use simulations yes you use uh, chem 3d is one of them and spartan mm. is another one so how does your lab use the software to design the molecule and have the simulation so you know that it's going to be good good host yeah firstly we we use another software called chem draw to to draw the structure we uh, the structural formula formula of your structure then just use the molecular dynamic simulation then the the software will get uh, optimize your structure then you will see your structure is possible or not mm. if it is a possible structure then you are going to make it but if it's not uh, is not possible is a, a very uncommon structure uh, uh, very strange <laughs> one then you will think about it. maybe i have to uh, redesign or improve the structure or something like that yeah so simulation uh, can make our work uh, more simple but uh, yeah the uh, you you cannot uh, just uh, uh, think with your uh, brain then to make it uh, the maybe uh, in the end then you get a useless structure so that's possible so we have to make uh, sure make sure we don't waste our time yeah so you're making sure that the the host is gonna be able to be possible be possible and uh, functional and maybe. functional yeah. yeah 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 maybe you may you design the micro cycle but uh, finally the structure is not uh, is not a micro cycle is just uh, uh, <laughs> totally collapsed uh, yeah, structure yeah. then oh. you do need to synthesize yes yes so yeah. that's why you run the chemistry Simulation. simulations to yeah. make sure that the molecule that you're designing is going to be functional yeah yeah uh, okay. i think nowadays uh, the uh, simulation is uh, uh, very helpful and important for our study yeah more and more important yeah and maybe uh, even going further uh, ai can help us to oh uh, you just uh, give me a uh, water size uh, and uh, what uh, uh, moieties we are going to use uh, for to make the structure then the ai can help you to design yeah yeah i yeah, yeah. i think uh, that's possible oh yeah yeah we can use the computational capacity and the creative capacity to run a lot of different simulations yes maybe millions of designs of what could it be an optimal host yeah yes. yeah yeah yes. interesting mm. i love how applicable simulations are to scientific advancement this is very cool okay so then let's say you get the really good molecular design very mm. functional mm -hmm. okay so now is the organic synthesis yes okay so you want to achieve a target molecule down the line this molecular design what you made for the host mm -hmm. you want to achieve it down the line yeah but you need to add first these non-target molecules solvents reagents and then you need to go through this organic synthesis process so teach us about what's going on in the synthesis process yeah in the synthesis normally for the target uh, uh, compound we we are uh, we can synthesize through one step or multi steps uh, so uh, firstly uh, normally you run uh, carry out uh, uh, organic uh, reaction organic uh, then uh, after the reaction uh, you normally firstly remove the solvent by 
rotate web editor, then uh, use the chromatography to purify your compound, then get you get the next uh, step called starting material. Then you use this uh, compound to do the next step reaction. Then again and again to go to the target compound. After you get your target compound pure purified, then how to get, how to how to believe you get a pure compound? So you have to use the like a AMR and the mass spectroscopy and the chromatography to see the purity of your compound. That's called the identification and the characterization. Then after uh, uh, that step, you get your pure compound. Then you can start to study the like the host gas bandy behavior and uh, also the bandy properties uh, of your microcycle. So yeah. yeah. Whoa, whoa. Okay, so this first part of the organic synthesis, you have to find the right non-target molecules to add to solvents and reagents to try and make this final yeah. targeted yes. molecule that you designed. That's how do you even how do you know what reagents, solvent, and non-target molecules? How do you know that if you combine these things together, it's going to make this really good host that you designed? So uh, we have a process called the retrosynthetic analysis. Uh, you get your target compound, then based on the target compound structure, you can use the retrosynthetic analysis to uh, retroanalysis the or oh, the yeah. next step. Uh, oh, wow! Yeah. So the, re yes, retro synthetical analysis. Analysis. Yes. Wow! Is that? RSA, do you say that? RSA, retro synthetical analysis? Not yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes? you can call it RSA. R yes. RSA. Yeah. So, uh, this RSA, retro synthetical analysis, you can take what is the Ta molecular design, the final target one, yeah. and it will, this retro synthetical analysis will say, why don't you try these molecules, these reagents, and this solvent? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, step by step, and wow. go back to the starting material. Wow. Yeah. How does RSA work? Uh, How does it guess what the, this RSA? I think uh, most uh, in most cases uh, based on the literature. The literature. Yeah. 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 Based yeah. on the literature. Because you know your final structure. Yeah. So you have the you have some because it's the total new totally brand new compound, but uh, you have some similar functional groups or moieties. You can find the literature how to synthesize this kind of moieties, then integrate together, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But uh, sometimes you need to try. So, uh, so does um, RSA have a catalog? Is there like a dictionary or a library or, you know, the big catalog so that I can uh, say that, okay, maybe this molecular design could have uh, an Different RSA. ways. Yeah. yeah, different ways. But yeah. it could be like maybe like a library or catalog where it's like, okay, this molecular design is kind of similar to this other one. So yeah. they're going to have kind of similar RSAs. Yes, and exactly. these two are very different, so they're going to have very different RSAs. Yeah. So there's a big catalog yeah. of final uh, molecular designs and how to possibly get to them. Yes, exactly. And, and then yeah. every time you have a new uh, simulation of a molecular design, mm. you uh, you you go through the process of the RSA and then you do the organic synthesis with what the RSA said mm. and then if it's successful mm -hmm. or close to successful you give maybe you can do the the training the machine training and say that was a good RSA recommendation yes actually some chemists are doing this process by AI yeah yeah that's the power of AI I think yeah uh, wow. Maybe you can, 
uh, after the the machine learned a, a lot uh, enough processes uh, interactions, so then the machine can give you a very good uh, way to synthesize yes. uh, a very short way or very simple way or very high efficient way to synthesize your target molecule. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wow. So there's there's um, some uh, organic chemists, ones that are doing the super molecular assembly. Some are figuring out how to train the machine and mm. say this RSA was bad, this RSA was medium, this was good for mm. the specific molecular design that we're looking for. Mm. So they constantly give it a new molecular design and see what it gives for an RSA, do the organic synthesis and see if it was good, bad, mm. where it was. And then get and then train the machine. Yes. Train the algorithms to give better and better RSAs. Yes. Yes. So you uh, have higher higher success rate every time you do your synthesis. Yeah. 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 Wow. Wow. Again, RSA retro synthetical analysis. Analysis retro synthetical analysis. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So then, uh, okay. So now you figured out um, what the RSA told you what molecule solvents and reagents to put in, uh, and then you uh, how, now now what happens? Do you you like I saw in the lab you have a process of like um, uh, the machine is kind of uh, maybe maybe doing the the uh, the, the circular motion of the, uh, the 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 synthesis. So mm -hmm. so how do you know if you have to shape? You have to move it like this. What temperature it has to be at? If it has to be cold? Mm -hmm. If it has to be really hot? Because you have the very cold machines. Yeah. So yes. How, yeah. How do you know what temperature and what motion and for how long? Uh, uh for uh, for one specific reaction. Normally, we firstly we go into the we to read the literature to find the similar compound how to synthesize that one. We we use firstly we use the similar conditions to synthesize our new compound. Yeah. So firstly we we look into the literature to find the, some references. Then follow the references to maybe to improve it or something like that to to reach our compound yeah okay yeah. so you if you have a molecular design that is completely new yeah you look for something similar in the literature yeah and then if you don't find something similar then it's kind of a guess a close guess as close as you can get yeah uh, yeah, if it's uh, totally brand new, no, uh, no any literature reported, then uh, uh, you you can try, you can yeah, you can uh, develop a new way, a totally brand new way to synthesize it, or yeah. maybe you have to uh, doubt your design has some problem. <laughs> oh, because why aren't people going towards that design? Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, but so you could have some good idea. Yeah, who knows? But, uh, yeah, who knows? Yeah, who yeah. Knows? maybe you just uh, make a great compound. Just uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so so okay, so you look for if you usually when you make the molecular design, you find some literature that says okay, this amount of heat or cold over this amount of time, and maybe spinning or yeah. maybe yeah yeah okay yeah yeah. Okay. Okay. So you'll find the similar conditions. Similar conditions. Okay. Yeah. And this takes can sometimes be several days yeah. for the synthesis to happen. Yes. Sometimes like uh, overnight, uh, overnight or yeah. one week uh, or maybe a few hours. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Anywhere from a few hours to a week or more yeah. can be okay. And then, okay, so then um, once the once that 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 synthesizing process is done then you have the, the it, um, you have your your target molecule molecular design is in this mix mixture yeah and you want to purify yes. it out of the mix 
Yes. Okay. And then this is where you are teaching us about, about rotary evaporation. So that's yeah. the first one. So you go and you have the mix do a process that's moving. The solution of mixture. Yeah. Solution. Yeah. Uh, solution of mixture. Yes. Then, firstly, you uh, after uh, actually after reaction, you get a solution of mixture. Then we normally we have we have some work up process work up process to to remove some like a uh, uh, salt the uh, salt or something like that to wash your organic face mm. then to dry then then collect your filtrate that's the uh, the solution of your mixture but uh, you remove the sound inorganic salt or others what soluble impurity or something like that okay. this is the first purification then after you connected the, your the solution of your mixture then you got the you rota evaporator to remove the solvent mm -hmm. remove the solvent you will get the residue that's the solid normally normally maybe also oil depend on the melt point of your compound yeah, yeah. Then you get your your solvent is literally separating yeah. from the mixture. Yeah, from mixture. Yeah. Yes, through this rotary evaporator. Yeah. Then you which is spinning the rotary evaporator spinning yeah. so to to make the evaporation faster. Evaporation, and you have a little like water. Yeah, at water. The bottom. Yeah, water can heat it. Heat yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Solvent gets evaporated, gets separated, yeah. and then you're left with the mixture. Okay. okay. The mixture. Yes. So. Now the mixture is a mixture without a solvent. Then you can use the chromatography mm -hmm. to purify your yes. yeah, purify to get what what you come what you want. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. What, now, what inside the chromatographer? This is like the last step of the purification. Yeah. Um, in the chromatographer, you were teaching me before we started. It's like a race. Yes, the rest. Yes. Yeah, and so you, your, uh, your f final target molecular design is going to, is it going to come first, or is it going to just come at some point different than the other? Some point different. Some point different. Just so it can come different. later or second yeah. or third or whenever. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's okay. the make uh, make the the distance uh, between. Yeah. Two parts uh, 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 big enough. Yes. So you you have That's enough time and uh, yeah. to to connect uh, then. Yes. Yeah. Get uh, the enough purity. Yeah. What does the chromatographer do to uh, the mix to make it so that the two or mm. the three or however many are left so that they separate? Uh, yeah. This is a kind of. Uh, uh, we call the absorption desorption process. So, if the your compound has a strong binding to the to the column, so mm. uh, the your your target compound will run very slow because the binding is very strong. But if another compound uh, binding very weak, uh, so fast, fast. Yeah. yeah. So okay. you can. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So you can separate. Okay. Okay. And then now you have your uh, final target molecules. You yeah. have it. And now you need to do identification. Yes. So this part you use, you need to make sure it's the correct compound. So yeah. you want to, what you designed in the software with yeah. the molecular design, yeah. you are now going to do nuclear magnetic resonance. NMR and mass spectroscopy yeah. to basically see if if what you see in the identification is what you designed in the software. Yeah, to see okay. that the, the, the compound you get has the correct structure. Yes. Yes. If it has the exact structure, you want it to be exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then the next one is the uh, the electron microscopy mm. and the atomic force microscopy AFM. 
Mm. And this is, be- this is because you're starting to study the supramolecular assembly. Yes. Okay. So once you identify and make sure it's the correct compound, then you need to go a, is it a little bit deeper. Yeah, go a little bit deeper to study the assembly behavior of your compound. Maybe, for example, or for my gold extract, uh, gold recovery uh, work discovery. I use the SCM to discover the uh, assemblies. The, the assemblies uh, of the uh, psychotechnology with uh, gold is actually is the highest vector ratio nanowire. You can clearly see uh, with the SCM scanning electron microscopy. Yeah. yeah. So that's uh, after you make your target compound, then you use your target compound to do assembly yeah okay so okay you see that the assembly is what you wanted it to be in the molecular design okay so it's yeah. now what you want it to be now you need to figure out because you were teaching me about this that the yields can be a little low yeah the, small yields yeah for the ma- macro cyclic compound normally the yield is uh, quite low so sometimes we have to improve the pro- synthetic process yes, to, yes. to to enhance the yield yes yeah there's no uh, machines the size of this building <laughs> yeah for uh, for doing the the organic synthesis for one whole day imagine the the building was <laughs> either super cold or super hot and it yeah. was being moved around you know because then you could maybe you could do you know big bioreactors full of organic yeah, chemistry yeah. Yes. processes yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bioreactor, <laughs> actually, now people are doing very well, I think. Yeah. They can do very complicated uh, organic synthesis. But then yeah. you also need the bioreactor sized yeah. uh, rotary evaporation, yeah. the bioreactor sized chromatography. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bioreactor sized for every because if you want to do an identification to make yeah. sure it's correct <laughs> for every single one of those uh, so you'd have to find a way to batch yeah the whole thing for the proper molecular yeah. assembly to make sure that it was all right or and to get rid of the the ones that were wrong which yeah. would be wow that would yeah. be yeah yeah but the uh, do you see that where the future is going in the big bioreactor direction for uh, for supermolecular chemistry for these organic synthesis? Yeah, I see the future. Yes, that's po- uh, possible. Yeah, but, but uh, uh, as w- what we are doing now, the lab the lab experiment is totally different <laughs> from the um, factory process. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, We're in the baby steps still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, yeah. Mo- most of the synthesis you can do in the lab space, but uh, to, uh, to like uh, to a factory or uh, you, uh, you uh, if you go to engineering area, that's impossible. Maybe totally uh, 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 too expensive or something like that. For now. And this may change down the line, maybe. Yeah. So then, um, you know, okay, so if this turns out to be, you know, slightly wrong in some way, if it was, you know, you look and it's the wrong supermolecular assembly, or if it's the slightly wrong uh, compound Mm. that came out, Mm. then you need to go and change the variables in the organic synthesis process and try again. Yeah, yes. And then you keep trying and trying and trying until yeah. you get the right. Okay. And then once you get the right one, then you also want to test the mechanical properties 
of what you got. So if you wanted to make a good host, you want to make sure that it can have Fix the or something. Yeah. yeah, if that it can have the guest. Yeah, and yeah. that it can do what you want it to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, mechanic properties is uh, one possible, uh, one possibility. Yes. So normally, uh, we firstly uh, made we made the <coughs> made the target microcycle. Then we use some uh, spectroscopy to study the bandy constant to different guests. Yeah. If you see, oh, this microcycle band D to uh, band, uh, band to band to the gas molecule one one specific gas uh, very strongly, then maybe you can uh, separate this uh, gas molecule specifically with this uh, microcycle. So that's what we call the uh, purification. You can purify that like the gold. We can use the cyclodextrin to purify the gold out. Yeah, that's uh, one major application area of supernova chemistry, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, so if um, you get to this point where you're starting to increase the yields and you're starting to um, make sure that the mechanical properties are being of great quality, it's actually working, then let's talk about where exactly then this could be also deployed. Because, you know, you mentioned some of the things at the beginning and now that we have a good idea of the actual, you know, process of getting it there, I want you to teach us about the topological structure design. So you were explaining to me that you can have molecules that instead of having a covalent bond that holds them together, you can have a mechanic bond that holds them together, like two rings. Yeah. Like this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And this is so interesting because we don't know if this is found in nature. Mm, yeah, we don't know yet. We don't I know think. yet if it's yeah. found. So this could be totally synthesized by us yeah. and it could be very powerful, a mechanical bond. Yeah, mechanical bond, yes. Actually, this uh, people can al already synthesize this very simple unit, two ring mechanically locked together. Yeah, but uh, yes, this is a very basic uh, uh, mechanical bounty unit. Yeah, so we are going to design much m more complicated topological polymer or topological nodes. Like uh, you make a necklace Yes. Necklace, a molecular necklace. Molecular necklace is a, uh, a multiple ring interlocked together to make a big ring. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, why would you make that? Uh, why? Because this, this kind of mechanical bond has uh, very unique properties. Yeah. Because this ring and the ring, the ring don't have covalent bond band together. So yeah. Uh, between two rings don't have any strain energy. Yeah. This is totally free. It's totally yeah. free moving. Free moving, yeah. So wow. you can um, just uh, the, so this kind of you like you see the the necklace is very smoothly change the shape it, and it does, the, yeah. the the. the it's the, so smooth, yeah. So smooth, can yeah. flow even, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. liquid flow. Uh. Yeah, because once if you you know you hold the string of of chains and then if you just you know drop it down, it just goes. Yeah, it just falls perfectly into the little yeah. pile. Actually, the, yeah. the, it's like the shoe, the 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 like the the past then 
Just the, uh, yeah, then... Yeah. Yeah, like the chocolate, maybe. Like the, the liquid the, chocolate. Yeah, yeah. that swirl. The it's liquid. liquid. It's some kind of similar it to seems liquid. It's like a liquid, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, but it's a polymer, it's a yeah. solid, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That, that's a very unique for solid materials. Where do you think that can be used, the mechanical knot in a necklace shape? Uh, this kind of, uh, I think... Uh, or even also in a lattice. It can be made yeah. in the lattice. Yeah, the lattice, to, 2D. 2D lattice. 2D or 3D. Or 3D, yes. Yeah, or 3D. Where do uh, you think those can be used? This, this can be used, uh, I think, uh, uh, for example, the shape. Uh, for the, because these are bounded by mechanic bond, uh, ring and ring, then don't have... Uh, any strain energy so uh, sometimes if you use the uh, ion to bind it to bt2 ring then you will make the structure stronger because the ring the uh, two ring connected together then the structure is very strong but after you remove this ion then the the whole uh, 3d structure will become collapsed Whoa. Yeah, so the shape can change, the Whoa. mechanic properties can change, can you and the, the capaci capacity also can change. Yeah. So this could be important for like nanotechnology? Yeah, uh, sure, yeah. The, if I can very easily go from a 3D lattice yeah. and then to yeah. tiny little Just collapse, the, collapse yes. it. Yeah. Wow. That's true. Can, can it go back? From the tiny yeah. to the, to that's the three. A, we call the shape uh, shape memory material. Shape memory material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. shape memory. Just but that. how do you? Uh, you said remove the ion. Uh, yeah. For example, that yeah. you can use the ion to moderate uh, the property change. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But I can reintroduce the yeah. ion. Yeah. And then, it is how would it just go shape? memory back. E expand yes yeah how do i reintroduce the ion what would i have to do if i had an object that could go back and forth how would i reintroduce the ion or take it away uh if you take it away normally you can use the extractor to to take the or just the, if the ion can be oxidized or or neutralized just use something to to uh, if the band is stronger, then you can extract the ion out, then the structure will collapse or so just neutralize the yeah. structure will collapse. Then you can put again, then yeah. This, uh, this is uh, one kind of stimuli, but uh, we can also use a, like a pH value change or, yeah, or even oh, just the light use the light because the some molecules can change the shape yeah can change can change the uh, conformation just the uh, in one conformation maybe two re really can bind uh, the very strongly then in another conformation uh, conformation the ring can r r rotate very f freely so through optical stimulation yes through light yes wow yeah that's the uh, Quite uh, interesting, yes. Wow. Also, is possible. Wow, yeah. Because wow, wow. with with when we talk about it for neuroscience, we uh. say optogenetics. Yeah. You know, for modulating uh -huh. neurology, maybe there's an opto supermolecular chemistry. <laughs> yeah. 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 Op an, yeah. An, op an opto. For, we call opto maybe mechanical. Not up to photo super mega chemistry, photo super molecular chemistry, uh, super mega photo chemistry, maybe also. super molecular photo chemistry. Yeah, wow, yeah, wow, interesting. Yeah, wow, and also the nanotech potentially side yeah. of it, too. Yes, yes. So, super mega chemistry is uh, is uh, interdisciplinary chemistry, super molecular nanotech. Light multidisciplinary <laughs> chemistry. It is. Yeah. It's very multidisciplinary chemistry. Uh, yeah, yeah. Multi, yeah, yeah. It is. It's so multidisciplinary. Wow, wow. 
uh, opto super molecular nanotech chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they, yeah. yeah, it's so funny adding yeah. the words to it. Uh-huh. Okay, and I'm kind of envisioning a little bit like me being able to do something like down the line, being able to have really strong devices that can collapse down, Hmm. fit in my pocket, and then for me to be able to take them back out and to bring them up in back into their lattice shape, and then to access what I need to do with it. Yeah. That's uh, that's the possible, yes. That's uh, a very cool thing. Yeah. Uh, actually, this is a kind of see uh, the one application of this kind of material is uh, just uh, for absorption, because uh, uh, when you don't uh, you don't want to absorb uh, absorb the energy, then the structure can be collapsed. But uh, if you want to absorb, it, they just uh, expand. Then you can absorb the a lot more uh, gas oh. more inside. Then, if you want to squeeze the oh. gas out, then just uh, uh, let the structure wow. collapse. Then all wow. absorbs the. So the 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 host can be expanded and hold the guest, and yeah. then when you're ready to only Re- release the guest, release the guest, then just collapse it, and the guest and yeah, is gone. and then yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, yes. wow, interesting. Yeah. So that could be really good for like drug delivery, targeted drug delivery. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It could yes. be very, very, you know, slightly bigger with yeah. the with it, and then deliver it. Actually, the stimuli responsive materials. Stimuli responsive. Stimuli responsive materials. Yeah. So to light or to other stimuli, you yeah. could respond. Yes. Yeah, stimuli. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. And then you gave also you telling me before we started this other example, which mm. was the you like the potential of the double helix super molecule. Yeah. I think that's really interesting too. You gave the example of the rings, but could it also be if it was the if it was the 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 double helix intertwined all the way, also yeah. as a lattice or as the the yeah the single yeah, necklace yeah, yeah. yeah and then those have different uh, properties they have different applications because they'll have different strengths yeah, that, yeah. different strength different the mechanical properties yeah properties yeah yeah so yeah so uh, different the topological structure I think uh, can um, make a very unique. Uh, Structure so uh, even with uh, very unique properties uh, and the movements or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And unique movements too. Then you also, um, we, you know, we're talking about several times now, but these are all things that we have not found in nature. Everything that you're talking about with super molecular chemistry is designing things synthetically, organically that huh. is not found in nature. Uh, at least not that we know of. Yes, yes. And so then we can do very novel, unique things with health or agriculture or technology or any sort of advancement that we want to make uh, because we can synthesize it. We can simulate it and synthesize it and we can uh, bring it into our world at really big scales like bioreactors. And yes. this this can be very impactful. You were also giving me um, other examples too before we started. Um, porphyrin? Mm, porphyrin, yes. Porphyrin was one of the examples. Yes. Okay. Porphyrin um, that helps us uh, c- carry oxygen. It's, uh, like, it's like hemoglobin. Uh, yes, porphyrin yes, yes. Is like hemoglobin. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, so that can be something that helps us with our, our health. And then, um, other ones are like photovoltaics. Photovoltaics, yes. Is another one. Yeah, also photosynthesis. Also photosynthesis. Yeah, in plants, yes. Yes. Yeah. So we can maybe 
have, you know, the, like some of our buildings and, and uh, more of our things, we can have more of our things potentially get energy from light. Yeah. You get energy. So that, that's why photovoltaics uh, uh, in recent years developed uh, 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 a lot. Yes. Yeah. So, so super molecular chemistry could make photovoltaics more efficient. They yeah, can yeah, yeah. make it, them better at receiving energy from the sun. Yeah, I think it's possible. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's possible to make it uh, uh, well, uh, well organized. Uh, yeah. 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 The make the the dye molecules uh, well organized in the device. I think uh, is one way to enhance the uh, uh, efficiency. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. you can highly efficiently connect the energy from light and then convert it to electricity. Yeah. 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 So. Wow. There's <laughs> so many interesting applications and so interesting also learning about how it's actually done, the steps of supermolecular chemistry, about how it's done. It's really good to learn about the steps from you. Mm -hmm. All right, let's ask about the meaning of life. What do you think this big human experience is about? Uh, What's the, the purpose? The, the meaning of life. I think uh, the meaning of life is... Uh, this uh, question is very big. But uh, my question, uh, my answer is... Uh, the life is, uh, is for giving mm. and not taking, I think. Yeah. 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 Just for giving. Like, uh, uh, yeah. I think uh, we already uh, got a lot from nature, so we just have to give. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. The meaning of life, yeah. I, I like that. We've gotten a lot from nature, so we got to give, yeah, yeah. How can we inspire more people around the world to work together? Uh, I think uh, people have to love each other, then they uh, think about the other people more, and uh, like uh, President Kennedy said, uh, ask what you can do for the country. Don't ask uh, what the, the culture can do for you. I think uh, uh, that will make people work together and uh, yeah, think about other people. Don't uh, don't be selfish. <laughs> I think uh, yeah, uh, work uh, work together. I think uh, is a very good way because I think uh, one one person always has a huge limit. I think even mm. even you are a huge. <laughs> You are the greatest uh, scientist. Uh, I think uh, the, the limit is uh, obvious there. Yeah. Even, uh, are you, I think uh, no people should think uh, himself uh, is the uh, smartest people, or great, uh, greatest person. I think uh, people should be, uh, yeah, always know himself very clear yeah yeah I really like that quote a lot about what can you do for your world what can you do for our world not what can the world do for you um, I like that a lot that's a really good one and know yourself and uh, and increase collaboration around the world yeah yeah what about a skill that young people can know going into the exponential technology age? Uh -huh. uh, for young people, I think uh, uh, should, people should work hard. And uh, uh, maybe you are not smart enough, but you can just work hard. And you will um, always keep a learning attitude. Attitude, yeah. Always keep learning. Yeah, like uh, uh, people, uh, if you are poor, but uh, I think uh, if you always work hard, uh, you can make your reach in 
um, spirit or, or vest. Either way, you can get uh, one. I think. Yeah. yeah. Just uh, work hard and then keep learning. I think uh, no, no other uh, 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 straight or, or direct uh, way to bypass this. I think. Yeah. You always have to uh, like uh, oh, like something like uh, no pain, no gain. Yeah. 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 That's good. What do you think your industry, supermolecular chemistry, what do you think it's going to look like in 50 or 100 years? What would be the ideal tool, the best possible tool for your industry in 50 or 100 years? What will that look like, that tool? Uh, you mean in industry, the tool? Yeah. Okay. In industry, the, the uh, in 50 or 100 years, I think the tool, uh, uh, I think uh, almost no people work there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, all all machines can do everything, the people just uh, in, enjoying to... Uh, but uh, I think uh, um, AI uh, in, in some area, I think uh, uh, in next few years, uh, maybe become uh, uh, written to to human being. AI. Yeah. I think uh, if some people use the AI not correctly, yeah. they will make the evil machine and. Uh, <laughs> to fight with a human being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is very important. We were talking about the, the power of all of the, uh, the permutation yeah. capability for creativity yeah. of even something like super molecular chemistry. You wouldn't, we wouldn't have thought that we could simulate out billions of potential molecular designs and then go through the synthesis process and see if it comes out well and make it in bioreactors. Could it be that a hundred years down the line that yeah. a yeah. super intelligence can do all of that? Yeah. But also, if we get these powers, yeah. can we be smart enough to not hurt ourselves? Yeah, yeah. And to yeah. hurt each other, yeah. Smart enough, kind enough, I think. Yeah. Loving enough. Yeah. yeah, not enough, yes. This leads me into the next question. What do you think is the role of love in our world? I think uh, the most important uh, <laughs> role in our life, in our world, people should love each other uh, always. Even your enemy, you should love, love him. Yeah. Yeah. Don't hate anyone. Just love them and understand them and help them to love you. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Speaking so much of simulations yeah do you think this reality is a simulation the this reality uh this i i i don't think uh, this is a simulation this is real yeah yeah <laughs> what do you think is the most beautiful thing in the world most beautiful thing, most beautiful thing, uh, most beautiful thing, I think is uh, 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 harmony society, maybe. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Why did you say that? Because I want to see people uh, very nice and uh, every circle is very smooth uh, yeah. yeah you 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 just look everywhere uh, no killing no any yes. bad things happen i think that's the most beautiful thing yeah, yeah. yeah. a yeah. harmonious society yeah 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 <sighs> thank you so much for this episode thank you Thank you're, you for talking you're, you're, to us. You're welcome. <laughs> for coming on our show and teaching us about your work. <laughs> no, no. Really yeah. good.
Uh, my pleasure. Thank yeah. You. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Yeah. We greatly appreciate it. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on the episode. Let us know what you're thinking. Have more conversations with your friends, families, coworkers, people online about super molecular chemistry, about the way that we can do things like make new fundamental advancements in this field to design new molecules that aren't found in nature to do these processes of organic synthesis to purify and to for us to be able to design new topological structures as well have more conversations about that also check out the links in the bio below to De Chung's lab also to his papers to his twitter to his linkedin to his work and reach out to collaborate as well also support the artists the entrepreneurs the organizations the leaders around the world that you believe in in your community support them support us simulation so we can continue doing cool things like coming on site to westlake university and interviewing some of the smartest people here support us and go and build the future everyone manifest your dreams into the world we love you very much thank you for tuning in and we will see you soon peace Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, thank that you. That was awesome. <laughs> I mind so blown about super molecular chemistry and just how hard it is to, you know, that was so interesting. I didn't ask you about that um, before we started. Uh, retro synthetic analysis. analysis. How cool is that, too? Wow.